Over the years as collecting Masterpiece third-party Transformers, I have really been a fan of x Transformers. I like them because of the sculpt. I like the fact that they look good in both modes. I like the fact that for the most part, they're easy to get your hands on. You don't have to fight a 28 second sellout on pre-orders with these things and you get a relatively good figure for a relatively good price. But lately, even my own confidence in x Transbots has been shaken a bit. I am a bit disappointed in a couple of their releases and I'm actually concerned about a couple others coming out. But I also have to say I'm really excited about many more to come. Today I kind of want to talk about the future of x Transbots and what we can expect, what I expect and what I'd like to see from them coming up. So my first experience with x Transbots was a Polyon and it was one of my very first third party figures that I ordered and pre-ordered. A lot of the other ones I kind of got used second hand and I was just trying them out. But he looks good, he fit the bill but extremely complex and maybe overly complicated, but he still looks really good. I still have him to this day. I also picked up their Scourge and their Cyclonus, and the thing about these, that they both look good in my opinion. I think their Scourge is a little bit too small, their Cyclonus is almost too tuned to a detriment, and with a little bit more plastic in it than I thought. I kind of got used to a little more die cast in their figures, but still, both figures look good, and I have to say their Cyclonus looks so good, I was... I was deciding did I really want to upgrade to the fans toys and now I have both and they look good side by side. Then they started into the mini bots and I have to say that I didn't buy any mini bots from any company for the $60 plus price point, $60 to $70 price point. I wasn't in on it back then and I passed on them. I watched reviews just to see what people were saying and for the most part these reviews were negative on these. But I still went ahead and bought them on the second run anyway because I like the look. And they're not really that bad of figures, but that we might get better ones in the future. This is sort of the area where it started to get a little questionable about x Transpots. And after watching all these other companies put out their Trailbreaker, of the Trailbreakers that are available, I still like x Transpots the best. I don't know if Fans Toys will dethrone them, but I think it's still a pretty good bot. Then comes out with their Neptune and their Klaatu. I have to say that these are still two of the best of those characters, in my opinion. So x Transbot's done a lot of good over the years. They also released G2 versions of their figures. They're readily, easily available. So they do a lot of these production runs, and they're upfront with it, too. It's not like they're hiding the fact that, hey, down the road, we're going to recolor it and put it back out. We know x Transbot's is going to do a lot of the G2 recolors from the get-go. And a lot of times, they put up the, the solicitations for those around the same time. Like right now, we've got the G2 trailer and the G2 version of Motormaster available for pre-order around places. So then we had two releases that are really kind of struggling with the community here. First off, the lock figure. Now, I will commend them. When they realized that there were so many issues with it, they cold stop, recalled, and pulled them off the shelves. There was a a couple of days that I still saw them for pre-order and then the next day they were wiped out that you could not find any place that had them because they recalled it because of the issues they're having with lock. Now we want to see what this reissue is going to bring. Will it be a better figure? Will it work better? Will it not break? And all those kinds of things. And then with the fuzz, fuzz didn't break. I don't really see people saying it breaks. It's just really over engineered and over complicated and really there is zero margin for error in that figure. So if you have one one of the many, many hundreds of pieces out of place, it will not completely transform. And that is a challenge, and I hope they don't do that going forward. They've also expressed that they have issues with their Virtus, their Springer, which I've been saying is going to be the best one, and I still think it looks the best. So I am a little nervous about it, though. After what I've seen going on and kind of the direction they're going with their engineering, I really hope this works, and it works well. And this is a triple changer, so there's a lot more going on with it. So that gets us to the future of x Transbots, And the future of x Transbots is they seem to be going in a direction where they're going to make figures that nobody else is making, which is what they should be doing. I really like seeing figures that we've never seen made in a Masterpiece representation before, and that's what we're getting with these Omnibots. Now, I really thought we'd have seen the Omnibots by now, but they're jumping knee-deep in Defense Store. We'll talk about that in a second. 
but these do look great. I remember having the Omnibots as a kid, and they're special to me because they were mail order, and I remember waiting forever to get them when I finally got them. It was so exciting. Well, I hope we don't feel like we have to wait forever to get these and then finally get them. And then we get into Runabout and Runamuck. But looking at these figures, I start to wonder, are these going to follow the same type of a transformation as Fuzz? Is this still going to have the same type of challenges Fuzz has? Or will these be a little bit more simplified to where they actually can be transformed properly without following a 100 step process or whatever it took to get them there? It's crazy, the engineering in that one, and I hope they don't follow through with that with these. These do look a lot more simplified, but these are just renders. Once you see it in person, you see all of the actual panel lines, that's when you can tell exactly how challenging it's going to be. But I do want to give them credit. They're making figures nobody else is making. And will others follow suit and start copying them and giving them competition in this space? Well, they're going to be so far ahead of everyone and have put out so many figures by then, that I really think they're just going to own this obscure space. This space of figures that nobody else wants to touch. So we've got Punch, Counter Punch coming out. And they're also offering two different versions. An American version and a Japanese version. And there's a little more to it than just a different head. So a lot of people think it's just a head. Include an extra head. That's not all. There's a lot of little subtle differences throughout it with paint apps here and there. But I think I'm actually going to order both. So you can have one on one shelf and one on the other. And nowadays, for that size and scale of a car bot for 100 bucks, that's actually a pretty decent deal. So getting into their Defensor, we're starting to see the price impact. We felt the price impact with a few of their figures in the past, such as their Minasaur trailer. And this is $100 per limb, plus $130 to $140 for the main bot. And still unknown on the trailer, probably $200. So... That's probably where you're at. You're probably in it for 740 or 750 or something if you're in it for this combiner and that's you got to pay to play. So the prices have shot way up and that is kind of a challenge. Some of the figures they're putting out are a great value and some are a little bit questionable value, but overall 750 or 40 or 30 for a combiner is kind of where we're at with this uh, defensor. So at the same time that they're getting out a whole bunch of new obscure figures that they're working on. They're working on a Defensor. They're working on the Runabout run amuck. They're working on Punch, Counter Punch. They're trying to get Virtus production to where they can actually produce the thing. And then they're doing some other things like resurrect resurrecting old projects. And they're trying to, well, go head to head with Fans Toys. We all know that x Transbots and Fans Toys are top rivals. Heck, they might even just be best friends, best of buds, and they just want to up each other or one up each other or it might be even more sinister than that but they are rivals and they don't like to lose neither company likes to lose and this this galvatron looks pretty good what they've got going on looks pretty good i think there's going to be some changes to this because this is still just a render but once we see the actual prototype it'll be interesting to see what that looks like but they are taking on fans toys directly with this but they are really trying to up their game and take on fans toys with a perceptor they are trying to take on tesla 2.0 and i think they're doing a good job this thing looks great i hope it works great i mean it's really impossible to mess up a transformation on a perceptor right that's like one of the easiest figures you just move the arms up fold the legs flip the head down i mean that's that's all you got to do so there's not much to a perceptor transformation so i would expect this thing to be super duper rock solid this thing comes with a plethora of accessories, and so again, we don't know price. When they include a lot of accessories, you start wondering, are they going to push the $200 price point? I think if they keep this thing down around the 160 price point, they are going to destroy Fans Toys with all the people that missed out on the pre-orders, and these will sell. It'll be their Perceptor, and then when all of the pre-orders are sold out, and miraculously there's another thousand on the market at all these different places... Well, people are already happy with their extra transplants. This is an opportunity that they have that they could one-up fans toys. And if they do, they're going to regain quite a bit of, well, I don't know if trust, but maybe a little bit of clout in the community. So the alt mode looks really good on this Perceptor. And the other thing about this is, and I think they call it Jansen, is the, the name of Perceptor is Jansen, but they have these minifigures from one of the episodes where they all shrunk down and did something with Megatron. But... I need to rewatch that episode. That'd be a lot of fun. 
but they do look good. Like, this is so interesting that they're including this, and that these little minifigures are just a little add-on, but I don't know how much of a cost it's going to add on that they added on these figures. But the, the alt mode looks great, and really looking at it and trying to decipher how it's going to work, it doesn't look like they overcomplicated the transformation. I can see where all the parts are and how it's working. It looks like it's going to be a relatively simple transformation. The only problem I really have with this is that I don't see an option for a clear chest cover, which I would like to have. It's kind of a toy homage instead of the tune homage, and I know that they go hyper, super hyper tune. That's the way x Transbots goes, but it looks like they have these little clip pieces where you could clip in a plastic cover, so I don't know about that just yet. A transparent plastic piece to go over the chest, and if that's possible, and they include it, I'm going to be super excited. Here are all the weapons, what you would expect, including a blast effect, and it does look good. These weapons look great. You can tell that these are painted. Oh, and did I mention these are not renders? Like, they came out of nowhere. No announcement with a prototype that's probably ready for production. And no renders. Uh, not even renders. It's just straight up prototype, and all these pictures of the prototype, it's outstanding. They're including this tank mode. I, I view it as completely unnecessary. But it doesn't look like it adds to the complexity of the figure at all. And it hopefully didn't add to the cost of it at all. But hey, it's a thing that you can do. It's pretty simple. All right, here we go. Side-by-side -side comparison with the Fans Toys Tesla 2.0, the FT46. And this is a really tough one because they both look great. I mean, these look fantastic. Both of them do. So side-by-side, -side, starting at the top, the head and the face. So, Fans Toys face does look good, and that's one of the issues with the 1.0 Tesla. The 1.0 Tesla had a terrible face, right? Everybody hated that. And so, x Transbots is giving you like five or six different face options and expressions, and I think they all look pretty good. I, none of them look as bad as the 1.0, but I don't know when they come out which one will look better, which one I would like better. Of course, I'm going to get them both, so I'll, I'll know then. Looking down through the chest area, now I do hope that x Transbots includes a clear piece, but the Fans Toys has a lot of detailing going on in the chest area, so I don't know if maybe they do include a clear piece. You're going to get that detailing with that clear piece. Who knows? But as it stands right now, I like the chest on Fans Toys a lot better. Uh, looking at the center piece, uh, the way that x Transbots is doing that center part, I kind of like the abdomen area a little bit better than Fans Toys, but Fans Toys looks more like the usual toy function so that's how that one looks going down to the waist and pelvis area they're both done completely different and fans toys went with old school uh, hip flaps and x transbots is using a different like mini hip flap so the that affects the way the legs operate or the thigh area so that's different and that's interesting so right there it's it's so different i kind of like the x transbots better there then going down to the actual thighs, uh, I, I think the x Transbots with the thighs and the arms, I think those are painted. I think that's all painted, and I think you're going to get plastic in those areas with fan toys, but it's still too hard to tell, and it's too early to tell. And then there's the color of red overall. I do like the burgundy hue on the x Transbots a little bit more than on the Tesla with the brighter red. But still, till we get them in hand, it's still hard to tell what shade of color these really will be. I think the lower legs are a tie, and the feet are a bit of a tie, and they look like they both operate relatively the same in the lower leg area. So I didn't really get exactly the same kind of angles, but they both clean up really well in the back. Uh, the x Transbots with those mini flaps there in the back, the bigger flaps in the back there. Uh, so it does look like they're both really clean in the back. Pelvis area is cleaner on Fans Toys, but is Fans Toys going to have one giant butt flap? versus some smaller flaps, so that's kind of where that goes. But yeah, they both look good for the back. They both look good for the front. They're both good-looking figures overall. And lastly, x Transbots dropped a, a bit of a unexpected drop of Deluxe Insecticons. Now, this is not a true confirmation, but nobody was talking about Deluxe Insecticons, and they threw out Deluxe Insecticons, so... There it is. It's a possibility. And you know what? Nobody else has done Deluxe Insecticons. So they're going to do Deluxe Insecticons. And that's right up the alley what they're doing. So anyway, let me know what you think about X-Transbots going forward. 
Are you excited for them? Do they have to have a bunch of wins to win you back? Is there nothing they could do to win you back? Or are you going to wait for all the reviews and say, okay, I'll pick and choose which one I get? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And Tiderium Hanger out.